A very warm welcome to our Berlinale Meet with the filmmakers of Berlinale Shorts program number two. My name is Anna Henkel Donnersmark. I'm the head and the curator of Berlinale Shorts. Anna Lena, um, hello. Loved your film. Just uh, such a powerful in interrogation of history from 40 years ago. So, tell where why why take up Noriega today? Noriega, I, I have such vivid memories of that time and, and his dictatorship, the terror of his dictatorship. But um, your, your take on it's so original. So how did, how did the film begin? Well, the film began uh, in a particular way. I found uh, a lot of the political archive of Panama in the trash of the university, I think six years ago. And I start to restore that uh, by myself. And I start to see this image that I never see in my life. And was amazing to understand that this happened in my country because it's a story that we don't talk a lot. And with this image and with this restoration, I start to work with the army of Panama too, to make performance with them, uh, to put this image from the past and then singing in the present. And all this experience is very particular because came from out to the personal. It started to give me the courage or the interrogation and what happened in my family, stories that we never talk about, uh, about my grandfather, about his relationship with the dictatorship. In this way, uh, we do this performance in a way to to try to be how this dictatorship uh, of this image was also in the dictatorship in the house. No? All the films has uh, this necessity, uh, this desire to talk about violence and more in these times. And this really touched me because in a way, violence is something that is uh, in, in the relationships of adolescents, in the relationship of true friends, in the film of Nicola, in their political relationship, in religion. And um, I was curious uh, about the film of Mike uh, to ask to you, uh, about uh, about it. it for me it's very impressive uh, the way to put this uh, uh, this ritual if we can call it in a in different contexts because uh, it's a, a ritual that happened all the time in a place with a lot of people and I, I was very interesting to to understand uh, this approach that you make to uh, Decontextualize this, this uh, rehearsal in in this uh, a scenario. Okay, great. Um, well, you know, from a young age, I've always been sort of forced to go to you know various different churches, Sunday service, mm -hmm. the last ent entire days, um, and I've always like seen this sort of relationship between pasta being a sort of performer on stage. Uh, I guess it depends on the sort of pasta you get, but if you have like one of those super flamboyant pastas, um, you know, how much of it is sort of acting, how much of it is himself, you know, how much is it, you know, does he actually believe in um, what he's saying? So, you know, I've always wanted to sort of explore that kind of terrain and idea, but the the idea of staging things in an actual rehearsal, that came like really late. I, I, I've always wanted to make a film like this. I think I've had like the original, short script in about 2015 but it had nothing to do with like actors it was just like these church members rehearsing for like a rehearsal it wasn't until like i think early 2020 that i thought oh you know these guys are actually just actors you know what if they are just actors there are a lot of scenes that were kind of difficult to shoot i wasn't completely sure if they were going to work you know the abuse scene you know how's it going to come across people sort of understand it would they be able to interpret it in their own sort of way um 
and you're sort of doing a, a scene with abuse, you know, sort of uh, juxtaposed with scenes that are, you know, involves kind of staged miracles. So is it a question of whether they're, uh, are they rehearsing for uh, miracles, faked miracles, or are we actually seeing, you know, what are we seeing here with like these abuse scenes and these scenes that you wouldn't necessarily expect them to be sort of rehearsing uh, on the stage? Get out! Like this? For my better side? Yeah. Okay, so make I do like. How about if you see Bible there? <laughs> I don't even know, sir. Thank you. If you say good, just day easy if you hold my head. No, I don't want to touch you. I think it's day okay like this. <laughs> okay, share if you do and toss my head, make I just faint. Get out! Like this? Okay. Okay. I, I really want to ask uh, Emily a question about um, Young Hearts. Um, I love the film. I thought it was incredible. Um, you sort of like inter interweaving uh, narratives. Uh, you get sort of these like snippets of backstory from like all the characters. Um, I think like you know very early on is talking about Lucy and her father beating her. Um, how much sort of backstory did you yourself write and know and sort of relate to the uh, the actors and how much like the actors know because there's so much sort of going on away from the screen and you sort of feel the weight of all that. So I'm just wondering just about the level of backstory you yourself had written and know and then how much did you convey across to the actors? Uh, oh, tough one. Uh, um, <laughs> thank you for this question. Actually, it was one of the um, difficult thing uh, I wanted to experience with the, the, the movie. Um, I didn't want the, the characters to be too developed and not to tell the stories about uh, the relationship with the pa parents, uh, with the, how they are connected to each other. I think we understand in a way in the film that they all grew up together, maybe mm and just uh, stop seeing each other for a while because they're like adolescent, I don't know. And after, during this day, they meet again, they're just like uh, getting collisions or I don't know. And um, for Lucy particularly, uh, it was uh, strange because the, I didn't tell her that much stuff about the character. I didn't want her to, uh, to be, um miserable or something that she's beaten by her father perhaps she just ran away from home why is she away like that why is she carrying a plastic bag with stuff in it uh i don't know so something appear in in a in a film and when i edited it um i had all that i wanted without asking her to play those difficult uh emotions Okay, so my turn. Uh, I'd like to ask uh, Anna Elena a question about. Uh, I really love your movie too. It was, uh, as I said al uh, already to Anna, uh, a, a huge frustration not to be able to see the, the films in the big screen because the, the lights are amazing. And uh, so it was tough to have it on the laptop. Uh, I wanted to ask you uh, when in your, um, at what time in your process, uh, of course it's very violent um, and uh, it, it showed the, the, the trauma of your gr grandparents, but I wanted to know when in your process you decided just to show them in, in, um, together, just what, actually we saw them together uh, in one scene, just once, at what time that, uh, that happened in your process? Did you decide that from the very beginning, writing the scenario, or did you choose that mm -hmm. after? But I, I, really, I really don't write a lot of things. I, I okay. also, also, I came from theater too. And uh, normally I, um, I have some sensations or intentions that I like to do. 
but I really don't know because I need to feel the place and the people, um, how they will stay. And we did uh, three, uh, three sims of day of day together. Um, even it's difficult that they see together in a way. Um, I feel that was uh, was improvised that uh, moment that he she's in the bathroom uh, and he came uh, was something that happened actually he okay. he put in this door and we said this is the moment that uh, he needs to appear no because in a way uh, he's uh, they don't talk uh, in life in real life and in a way he exists even if he don't is is not in the life. He's a phantom of this uh, of this woman that she wants to take out of the body, but it's impossible. And it's the phantom of the dictatorship in everybody in Panama that is impossible to take out. You know. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> did, <laughs> thank you, Anna Elena. Did you know at the start that you were going to focus so much on their bodies? Seeing their bodies was so powerful and told carried so much of the story. Not actually. I uh, I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I was thinking to focus more in uh, how in the quotidian things, in the things of life, this story live. But then when I saw the bodies, uh, principle the body of him impact me that even if when he talked, he said that I do this in the war, I do this in the war. I saw this body that is with uh, a lot of woodens. And uh, also this, uh, this make me feel that uh, in these bodies live something that also is not possible to say, you know, the sadness, the angriness, the, the vulnerability. And in a way, I, I, I was looking this contradiction of uh, the force and the vulnerability and these bodies that speak, uh, because the voices don't speak, actually. This is the, the point, how to find a way to make a movie without uh, with people who don't want to speak uh, and actually I, I i i want to ask you john because uh, for me uh, i i i really like your film to touch me a lot this uh, way to approach and also i was thinking about the bears uh, in an animistic way you know why bears speak uh, i asked myself is the bears speak something that even humans can, we can understand you know, this violence. And I, I want to know more about this process of, of this text and these bears that talk. It was, I think the, the painfulness of, of Egypt and in the incarceration of so many people and Shadi's death and then Sara's experience. I was part of a group called Rainbow Railroad that brought the LGBT refugees from Egypt to Canada to Toronto and so I got to know Sarah a little bit when she was here and everyone was so hopeful that she'd be able to get her life back on track and it was you know she was she was one of the most extraordinary warm passionate people and people really thought oh she can make it she can make it and then finally when she took her life a month after this dawn chorus the the whole film changed and I felt I couldn't I couldn't make the I couldn't make this film without also talking about what had happened to Sara. She got out. She she escaped from prison, but still, in fact, didn't didn't escape. And so the I think I think with violence, it's sometimes impossible to find words that are appropriate or mm -hmm. can even start to approach. And so I think the birds gave me a gave me some permission. I, I felt like. You know, if if I if I can't find the words myself, maybe the birds can help me find the words. to ask Nicholas about Mr. Ping. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, um, 
The thing is, um, I, I grew up in a small village near Brussels. Um, and Brussels is still for being a rather famous uh, city. <laughs> It's uh, it's a compact city. It's a, a small city, and in Belgium we don't have um, good regional plans. So there are buildings everywhere. You can't do a hike of more than fifteen minutes, let's say, or you see buildings. It's impossible to get lost in Belgium, and um, so these regional ways they are often filled with with. Um, with schools next to a, a farmer, next to a bar with prostitutes, next to a very big mansion, next to uh, some houses where, where, where um, less rich people live. Um, the, doors, the doors come uh, immediately onto a, a, a highway where cars go at 90 per hour. So it's a very strange, when I was a kid, there was a long, I thought it was a long city and, and these highways. And on these highways, there are often big mansions that are built in the 60s and the 70s, very Belgian mansions. And, um, and when, when people, um, often Chinese people make restaurants in them, they just add like, um, some dragons or things like that, Chinese dragons to a very Belgian uh, house, which gives a, uh, a particular mix. And so I, I was, uh, I, I knew rather, yeah, early in the process that I wanted to, to um, find the film plays in, or the story plays in, in one of these restaurants. And um, what Kevin and Jason are doing in the film is something that uh, happened more or less to me when I was younger because the baker in my grandmother's street committed suicide in his aviary and he hung himself in, in his birdcage full of parrots. And when I was younger, I, I, I really thought that, that, that the parrots were everywhere in the gardens around my grandmother's house. And, and especially as my grandmother, who was this old, very kind, very Belgian um, woman, she, uh, she had a turtle, which was also an exotic thing. So it was, I'm, I'm really fascinated by the, by the strange mix of, 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 of this exotism and into, into, into Belgium and Flanders. So that was, that was why I made um, the baker, my grandmother's baker, I made him Mr. Pink. Emily, I really, yeah. liked, I really liked your film too. And- um, Thank you. Um, I thought it was a, uh, it was something that I wouldn't dare doing and I really liked it a lot. Um, also because of what Mike said about the background of characters, but I, I was, I, um, I asked myself if you came up very early with the idea of, of uh, having the structure that you tell several stories of of different characters instead of just focusing on one character and trying to, to put all these stories in one character because I think it's a daring choice and I was wondering how did how did you work on that in your script like on structure wise uh, actually as I said in the in the early uh, beginning of the meeting, I uh, get in inspired by the, the play I was working on with those uh, students. Yeah. Uh, and I just took uh, from that play three scenes, uh, which I particularly uh, uh, love. And there were like very um, violent scenes. Uh, uh, it's the scene where Yuna uh, asks Arthur to, to, to hit back uh, on her. Um, it's also the scene in, um, in the bench. 
And the last scene is the scene in, in the kitchen who wasn't really like that in, uh, in the place. So it's those three scenes, uh, they structured them a lot uh, with the teenagers, the, the actors, uh, to try to find the, 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 the words, the, the way to exp express themselves uh, about those uh, uh, violent um, emotions uh, um, trapped uh, inside their bodies. And, uh, and I didn't want it from the very beginning to tell uh, Yuna stories or Lucy stories or Yohan uh, stories or art stories. I really wanted from the very beginning to have this um, uh, not equal part for each other, but um, something choral. I don't know if it's correct in English. Um, and try to follow them uh, into that uh, intense journey um, and not to just focus on uh, one character. I wanted to uh, ask Michael. Um, I, 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 you actually already uh, part of my question about how, how you structure your films. So uh, I have uh, another question. Maybe you can tell us about light in your film because in every scene there is this presence, like a holy light. Uh, so can you talk to us? A little bit more about that. Okay. Okay. The lighting. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess. I guess it was just down to finding the sort of uh, right location for the the project. I had a location manager who um, took me around a bunch of different places. Um, I initially just initially just said that I want a sort of an event hall or something or some place like that. And he was taking, he took me to the National Theatre. I think it was like the third or fourth place he was taking me. And as I was walking to the place he was taking me, um, I saw uh, I saw this hall, you know, with these sort of overhead lights. And and I just said, "What is this place?" And uh, turn on the lights. And yeah, so I just thought, I don't care where you're taking me. I think this is the this is the location that I want. So um, yeah, we ended up using there and it was just down to my DOP to make sure that uh, the lighting looked good on the day, um, consistent. Um, and a lot of it, to be honest with you, was just down to him, uh, my DOP, and you know, just working on sort of a look for the film and my colorists in, in post as well. For um, for John, I have um, a bit the same question as as I had for Mike in the beginning because um, it interests me a lot when people have um, a very direct and immediate message um, to with their film, like when it's kind of a, a cultural activism. How do you approach the 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 moment where you have where you need to decide what you leave to the spectator and what you decide that they have to understand from it without any doubt they, you want to, to have this message. Yeah, it's, it's always tough. Um, there, I work on a lot of campaigns, especially focused on Egypt and the wrongfully detained. And it comes from my own experience. I, I was locked up in, in Egypt for 50 days in 2013. So I, I was on my way to Gaza to make a film, but we ended up getting locked up as part of the Rabbah massacre. 
Um, and so it's very, the, the subject matter is very personal. And, and since then I've been part of these campaigns and we're trying that very practical work of trying to get people out and people freed. And with this one, it was, it was again, maybe using the birds to take a step back from the direct campaign video of documentary aesthetics and making the strongest arguments and talking heads and personal pleas and instead making it a bit more poetic. I think making, making activist cinema, it's always that dilemma of how much is too much, how much is too on the nose, and then how much is too obscure, how much is too vague or too poetic. And so it's, it's a tightrope walk. And I, don't, I, I feel like every film, I, I, I get more and more confused about, about methods or less and less confident. But each time I sort of find, oh, I, I, think, I think this is gonna work. And then it's up to, it's up to audiences. Thanks. Yeah, what I really liked with it was also that what you did, it touches somewhere some of the essences of making, of being a director, I think, is like giving a voice or putting your voice on someone else, an actor, but here even more on, on birds, like you, you're giving a voice to those who don't have one. It's, it was, for me, it was a beautiful metaphor in your film. I really liked it, yeah. Thank you so much. It was very, it was beautiful to listen to your conversation. And I thank you all for exchanging your thoughts and experiences and questions. And yeah, it's time to say goodbye. And we hope to welcome you in Berlin in the cinema in, in the summer. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looking so for war. <laughs> and thanks again for sending us your beautiful films. We can't wait to share them with the audience. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you for having us. Thank you. Yeah. Thank Bye. you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Enjoy your day. Bye.